For the past several sections, we looked at single subset and multiple subset methods of modeling. Now, for this section, we're going to do the same thing from the UV and texture mapping perspective. This first method of UV mapping works in many different situations. Even though we will be looking at it from a single subset model point of view, the method we're about to use would be just as effective for larger objects that comprise a subset of a multiple subset model. What we're going to do is we're going to select portions of our model, apply a planar UV projection, and color the faces to a specific color to allow us to step through the selection in our UV editor so that the selections can be saved out individually in a high-res form. So to demonstrate, I'm going to switch over to the side view of our fighter here. You'll notice it's still just half a fighter. The reason for this is that later, after I've textured this entire ship, I can mirror model it and my texture will be mirrored as well. So I really only have to do half of my ship as long as I've planned my texture in such a way so that when it's mirrored it will still look okay. I really can kind of save myself half of the work. So starting from the side view, I'm going to open my point editing panel, use my selection tool, and let's grab this whole nose cone section. Now, what I want to do is I want to paint this section a specific color. In this case, uh, let's go for pure red. Now watch, since I have this whole section selected, as soon as I hit the paint face button here, it automatically will paint all those faces for me. Very nice and very convenient. Now I'm going to apply planar UV projection, maybe tweak it a little to get it perfectly straight, which I can even do in my uh, property panels here to make sure that it's an even, nice, perfectly square projection. Now remember, I need to turn off my projection before I open my editor. And you can see how the UVs are basically a big jumbled mesh here. But as soon as I start stepping through the materials, moving down the material hierarchy, you can see this is my nose section right here. Now what I want to do is, when I, when I go into an image editor and I begin to create my texture, I prefer to use a method that I call high res to low res. In other words, I prefer to work with individual files that are all high res before making one low, lower resolution texture to actually skin my ship with. So I'm going to hit the save dialog here go to my textures and let's call this nose.bmp uh, by default the material editor always saves stuff as BMPs so I click save and now watch what happens when I browse to that same directory in which I just saved it now there's an image file called nose which is that nice high resolution picture of that nose section now I can do this for every major piece of this fighter. I'm going to zoom in into our wing here. And now I'm going to show you another useful trick. I'm going to select this wing in its entirety, including the bottom of it. The reason for this is simple, because the top of the wing and the bottom of the wing are going to look pretty much identical once it's textured. Therefore, if I select all of the top of the wing and all of the bottom of the wing and hit my flat planar UV projection, what I've done is I've created the wing in such a way so that it's completely flat, the top and the bottom. It's almost as if the top now will mirror the bottom once the texture is applied, and this saves me a lot of effort so that I don't have to, to texture the top of the wing and the bottom of the wing separately. So now, with that wing selected, and I see I got an extra piece in there, so I'm going to click remove from selection, hold down control, and remove that. There we go. Much, no, much, much better. Now again, I want to paint that a separate color. Open my editor. Step through it. Get to that wing. Ah, there's my wing. So now I'm going to save that out as wing.bmp. And now you can see when I open up the image browser, here's my wing. 
Now I'm going to do this to every major piece of my fighter until I've pretty much covered all of the major pieces, keeping in mind certain optimizations. For instance, just like the top part of the wing is going to look the same as the bottom part of the wing, this fin here is essentially going to have the same texture as this fin here. So all I really need to do is just texture, eh, probably just this top one, I'll save out as a high res image file and then later once I've created my skin, I'll apply both the bottom fin and the top fin to the same portion of the skin. Now this will all make a lot more sense when, once we get to that section where we actually take our image skin file back in the game space and start applying it to where it belongs on the fighter. But for now, what I've done is I've taken the major portions of my fighter, I've saved them out as high res file wire meshes that I can take into a photo editor and to begin to paint my textures right onto the, uh, the wire frame so that it'll end up being a perfect fit later once I bring it back into game space. Really, all the prep work that we're doing in this section right now, when we come back with an actual skin file to paint onto the ship, it's going to make it an absolute piece of cake.